My goal is to make you an expert in IELTS academic reading and in this video we're going to explore multiple choice tasks that require only one option as a correct answer. Hey everyone, this is Dori. I'm a teacher of English and in this video we will be working, as we said, with a multiple choice task that only needs one option as a correct answer and we're gonna do this step by step. As always what you should do in every IELTS academic reading task is to read the instruction carefully no matter how many practice tests you have done in your life you should never forget this thing. Always read the instructions carefully in order first to uh, underline the word limit that you need to write or in this case that it is a multiple choice task to know how many answers you will be required to uh, find as correct because there are multiple choice tasks with only one correct uh, option as we're going to do today and multiple choice tasks that require more than one correct answer. In this video we'll be working with one correct answer as we said and four possible options. These types of tasks can ask you to find factual information from the text, can also test your overall understanding of the text, or even ask you what the opinion of the writer might be. And in general, they ask you to find specific information. Before we dive in, I want to tell you to stay tuned until the end of the video where I'll give you the VIP tip, a VIP tip, a very important tip that is, uh, that you need to remember for multiple choice tasks. VIP tip rhymes better, right? So step number one for these tasks and for any uh, reading task, of course, is skimming. Please do not waste your time reading whole chunks of text and follow my technique of underlining the first two lines of each paragraph and then skim diagonally to circle keywords. You can find this technique here. It has helped lots of students over the years. I will put the link uh, down below. In this video, I'll show, you the, I'll show you the technique with a not given task. But now, come and follow me to my screen and we will do together the same thing with a multiple choice though. Here we have a paragraph extract as an example. The topic is about the text, is about currency. So, we underline and read the first two lines of the paragraph. Currency, in its economic sense, refers to system of money in general used in particular country. It serves as a medium of up until here and we get the gist, we get the idea of what it's gonna uh, be about. So then we underline words within the paragraph that grab our attention quickly and cannot be paraphrased or whatever we think as we skim through that, uh, you know, it attracts our attention. For example, exchange could be a word, value really attracts my attention. These words could be different for you. It doesn't really matter. Banknotes, coins, credibility. There are some words that just attract my eyes. Bitcoin for sure. This is something that cannot be paraphrased and might be in a question somewhere. Economic utility. And we also have these that really attracted my attention. So listen, the words could uh, be good choices or not. It doesn't really matter at this point because all we care about is to create pillars in the text to guide us and keep us focused. Obviously, we continue doing that with the whole text. Underline the first two lines of each paragraph and then circling, underlining the words that attract our attention. But for the purposes of this video, we will work with this paragraph only, of course. Now, step number two. The next step will be to read the question more than once in order to fully understand what it asks. So the question is, what are the main functions of currency as described in the passage? Sometimes a simple word changes the whole meaning. So read it well, understand it and underline keywords before you read the options. So let's go to our question. We underline the important keywords and note that the word main here is definitely very, very important because it may have a lot of functions and it will probably, but we're looking for the main functions, the most important ones. So we have main functions, they're kind of a lot. Currency, okay, it's obvious because it's our topic as described in the passage. And always what? Also, have a look at the different ways the question could be phrased, either as a question, like so, what are the main functions of currency as described in the passage, but we cannot, you could also get this kind of question, which is not a question with a question mark, but like a sentence completion kind of question. The main functions of currency 
as described in the passage, a, uh, and then you have to find the uh, correct option. The options are exactly the, ch the, the same. They do not change at all. But the way they phrase the question is different. Step number three, try to locate the answer in the text before reading the options. Your previous skimming will help you with that. And now it's time for scanning. Don't base your answer on your general knowledge or assume that an option is correct. You must find proof in the passage. So notice that the answer is actually in the first two lines. Uh, actually not in the first two lines, but a little bit further down. This has happened time and again with my students, and that's why this strategy is so effective. Of course, it won't always be that way, usually only one answer in the whole reading exam, but I think it boosts your confidence and clarity when it comes to the reading text. So, let's read a little bit further down. It serves as a medium of exchange. That's one of the main functions for sure. So, it serves, stands as the main function. So, did you recognize the paraphrasing going on here? It will be very uh, frequent in a reading text. So, that's the number one thing you need to master for all reading tasks. If we scan the paragraph a little bit more, we will recognize more functions of currency, all correct. But don't forget, we need the main function. So, let's see. A medium of exchange, a unit of account, and a store of value. So, to me, these sound as the main functions. They are also the first that are mentioned. I will underline them. And beyond each economic function, currency embodies symbolic and cultural significance, often reflecting values, history, and identity of a nation. These are important as well, um, but I'm not sure if they would be considered as main. So let's go back to the options. And step number four, it's time to read the options in order to decide which one best describes the correct answer. So let's see. I, a means of conducting transactions, a valuable item and a source of pride for our country. B, a tool for economic transactions and international trade. C, a representation of cultural values and historical identity. D, a store of value and a symbol of technological advancement. So we know that the information in the correct option will probably not be presented exactly as it is in the passage. It will most probably be paraphrased or summarized in the vast majority of times, actually. So if you see the exact same words as in the passage in the options, then be careful because more often than not, they are there to confuse you on purpose, especially if the words can be easily paraphrased and they are not terminology or words that are not easily paraphrased. So, let's see. About A, a means of conducting transactions. It reminds me of a medium of exchange. Exchange is a transaction. A unit of account. Let's see. A valuable item. Another paraphrased phrase. A source of pride for our country. Now, I didn't see uh, that when I first scanned the text. I didn't see that as a main function. However, according to this option, it has the pride of the country as well. So, option A could actually be correct. Now, B, a tool for economic transactions and international trade. The first part is definitely correct, but international trade, is it one of the main functions? Not really. It is over here before Bitcoin. That's why underlining words is important because they act as a guide for you. So moreover, the stability and credibility of a currency and crucial for economic transactions, investment in international trade, it's not one of the main functions. It is mentioned in the text, but it's not. So definitely B is out of the question. A representation of cultural values and historical identity. It's definitely mentioned in the text as a function, but this option does not reflect one of the main functions that we all know, which is the, the transaction part, which is the medium of exchange part. A store of value and a symbol of technological advancement. Again, the part of technological advancement is not one of the main functions. It is mentioned uh, towards the end and not as a main function, but is rather uh, an addition to what the currency already does. So, while options B, C, and D all describe aspects of currency mentioned in the passage, Option A encapsulates the three primary functions of currency as mentioned in the text. So pay attention if an option has something that is correct, as in B, but the, the second part does not stand true according to what the question 
asks you. And now time for the VIP tip. So never forget that multiple to choice tasks, either with one correct option or with more correct options, always, always, always follow the questions, follow the order of the passage. This is extremely important to remember because this is not the case for, for all reading tasks. About the first question, you will find the answer first in the passage, the second question second, the third third, and so on and so forth. This is extremely important in case you, you can't find an answer, but you have found the previous question and you also have found the uh, the following question, so you know more or less where, where to look for the answer that you cannot find and then concentrate on that part of the text. That's a breath of fresh air in the difficulty of IELTS academic reading, if you ask me. So that's a VIP tip to remember. Stay tuned for next week. We're going to do a multiple choice with three options uh, together step by step. Until next time, if you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe or also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. All links are down below in the description box. Thank you very much for watching and as always, good luck with your exam.